We will continue our discussion on initialization of one dimensional arrays and in this lecture we will try to understand what is designated initializers. So let's get started. Sometimes we want something like this. Like at certain positions we want to fill values other than zeros and to the rest of the positions we want to fill all zeros. One day I was thinking that how great it would be if I don't have to explicitly write these zeros. Obviously, I want to ease my task, right? Therefore, I want these zeros to be automatically filled like we have already seen in the previous lecture. Whenever we have elements lesser than the length of the array, then the rest of the positions will automatically get filled by zeros. But as you can see, these non-zero elements are not in a sequence. They are at certain positions. Up till now, we haven't seen any method in which these positions will automatically get filled by zero whenever these non-zero elements are not in a sequence, right? Let's see if there is some method to do this or not. What we want basically? We want 1 in position 0, as you can see, 2 in position 5, 3 in position 6, right? And we want that rest of the positions will automatically get filled by 0 according to the length, right? To do this, we have to write something like this, okay? This way of initialization is called designated initialization and each number in the square brackets is said to be a designator. This is nothing but an index, right? And this is the value you want to store in that particular index. As I want 1 in position 0, therefore I have to write something like this. Square brackets, the index, this is called designator and equal to sign and then the element that you want to store in that particular index. At 5th position, I want to place value 2 and at 6th position, I want to place value 3, right? There are certain advantages of this way of initialization. There is no need to bother about the entries containing zeros. If suppose we have an array like this in which there are numerous number of zeros and only at two positions we have values other than zeros, then you can simply write this array like this. It is much compact and much easy way of writing than this. Clever, isn't it? There is one more advantage of designated initialization. There is no need to even bother about the order at all. That is, these two are same. You can write like this way or you can shuffle them. You can also place this designator first. There is no problem at all. Okay? This is also considered to be an advantage of designated initialization. Now, be careful that if the length of an array is n, then each designator must be between 0 and n minus 1. This is quite obvious that if length is n, then index, as we know, goes from 0 to n minus 1. The maximum index possible is n minus 1 and the minimum index possible is 0, right? And designator is also an index. For example, suppose we have an array like this, then you can write this designator or this designator. There is no problem. This is correct. But you cannot write something like this. This is wrong. Because of this index, this is wrong. Now there is one question that what if I won't mention the length? In that case, designators could be any non-negative integer. Okay? And compiler will deduce the length of the array from the largest designator in the list. Compiler will deduce the length in that case. You can mention as many designators you want and compiler will deduce the length of the array from the largest designator. Like for example, we have something like this. In this case, you are not mentioning the length over here and you are simply specifying the designators as much as you want. You can see that this is the largest designator over here. So compiler will deduce that the length of this array will be 50. Because of this designator, maximum length of this array would be 50. As this is the index and this is the largest index, therefore the length of this array will be 50 because it is always largest index plus 1. Right? Finally, no one can stop you from doing this. You can mix both the traditional way of initialization 
and designated initialization. You can mix both of them. We can say that this array is equivalent to this array. Obviously, at position 0, 1 will be placed at position 1, 7 will be placed at position 2, 5 will be placed and at position 3 and 4, automatically zeros will get placed and then at position 5, as it is indicated by this designator, 90 will be placed and then at position 6, 6 will be placed and so on, right? But if there is a clash, then designated initializer will win. You can clearly see that at position 2, value 3 is stored, right? But there is one designator 2 as well, which says that at this position, 4 must be stored. Then in that case, designator will win. This means this array is equivalent to this array. At position 2, 4 will get stored, not 3, okay? Now here is one good news for you. We have covered all these three questions successfully. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.